Do you ever have those days where you feel like you can't get anything done? Like you're busy, it's 200 miles an hour in a million different distractions, I mean directions, but you get to the end of the day and you're like, did I actually accomplish anything today? Did I actually get anything really important done that is moving me towards my dreams, goals, the big rock things in my life? I think this is a pretty common feeling. I've definitely had those days, but then I heard about something called Parkinson's Law and it really gave me some clarity about why this happens and what you can do about it. Now the best way that I can explain Parkinson's Law is for us to go back to high school. I know there's parts of high school I definitely don't want to go back to and you're not really going to want to go back here either because what I want you to remember is that time you were in history class and the teacher said hey you've got this essay due however many thousand words and it's due in a month. You remember that? I mean it happened in history class many other classes of course. What did you do when you were assigned that task? Did you go home and get started working on that paper right away or did you leave it right to the very last second cramming it in the night before to deliver the paper? I remember being kind of somewhere in the middle. I'd go home and I'd kind of maybe draft something out or an outline or something and then I'd be like ah I'm making progress. I'd put it to the side, carry on with whatever else needed to be done, fun, exciting things and then get to the last couple of days even the last night before and all of a sudden there I am in this sort of tension, focused, mild panic state trying to get this paper done to hand in the next day. And then when I've gone through that it's been interesting because it's not like the paper wasn't good or bad, like it would come out with a decent grade, I'd pass the course because I was highly focused able to get something done fueled by that mild panic. And that example is Parkinson's Law in action. Parkinson's Law states that work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. So if you had been given two weeks to write the paper, you would have got it done in two weeks, but you were given a month, so it took the entire month. The actual amount of time that you were given to write the paper is almost completely irrelevant. You probably could have got it done in a day if that's all you had to work with because you did that, right? You did that many times over through university, college, high school. You did it in a day, even though you had an entire month to do it. And then what I think we need to be aware of is as we've come out of a school environment, whether that be high school, college, as we come out of that environment, all of a sudden the idea of deadlines and things that we used to have in our life, that changes. Yes, we have deadlines at work, but there's so many other areas of life where all of a sudden there are no more deadlines. It's up to us to set the goals to say this needs to be done at this point in order to be able to be successful in this space. All of a sudden some of those benchmarks have gone away. But if you think about it when you're at work right before you go away on vacation, have you noticed what happens? You've only got two days left and all of a sudden your productivity absolutely skyrockets. And that's just another example of Parkinson's Law in action. Work will fill the time that it has available. So if you've only got two days to get it done, you're going to get it done in two days. I heard one person say that Parkinson's Law is a law that's meant to be broken. But I actually look at it as a law that you can actually use to your advantage. You can actually make Parkinson's Law work for you. So here are a couple of tips on how I think you can make that happen. So the first thing that I want to recommend is that you define what does a win look like? You have some big goals, big dreams, things that you're shooting for, you need to be able to walk that back to what does a win look like in stepping towards that goal. You know that I'm a big fan of identity based goal setting, like this is the type of person that I would like to become and then I walk that back to say okay, so if I want to become a better husband, if I want to become a better father, if I want to become a better leader, what does that look like on an actual daily basis? What are the steps that I can take, tangible steps that I can take on a daily, weekly or monthly basis that is going to move me in the direction of the identity that I want to pursue? And then when you have that, when you have that action step, whether that be in your finances, your fitness, your relationships, your leadership, what you're passionate about, whatever that is, if you can walk that back, you need to just say, okay, so how much time should I allocate this on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis or on a daily basis, ideally if it's that important to you, how much time can I allocate to this on a daily basis that is going to move me in the direction of this goal? Now remember, how much time you give that action is the amount of time that it will take. But this leads us into tip number two. And tip number two is time blocking. And I love to think about time blocking as putting in the big rocks first because once you know what those actions are on a daily, weekly or monthly basis, those actions that are going to move you in the direction of the goal or dream that you have, once you know what those are, you can block those out on your calendar. You're saying you're putting in the big rocks first. These are the steps that are going to move me in the direction of that goal. Now I personally don't block out my calendar every 15 minutes of every single day, but if you look at my calendar, I've got big rocks in there. So filming every week
Creek is a big rock. I put that on my calendar. It happens every week, the same time, the same day, and that's in there every single week. Prepping is on my calendar every single week because I know that I'm gonna need an hour to an hour and a half, whatever that is, to prep for this. And then sometimes I've gotta move those rocks around, but at least I've got the blocks in my calendar that I can work with those. So when I get to the end of the day and I say to myself, did I accomplish anything today? If I've got the big rocks on my calendar, then I can know that yes, you know what, it was busy, it was hectic, a million different directions, a million different distractions, but if I can get the big rocks done, then I am accomplishing something. I am moving in the right direction. And the third tip that I wanna give you is that any deadline is better than no deadline. I remember when I was writing my book, I'd been writing it for about a year, and I really felt like I was making progress, but I couldn't really see the end. And I recognized, you know what? I just need to create a cutoff point. So I hired an editor and said, you know what? I'm gonna have the draft to you, the first draft that they're gonna look over. I'm gonna commit to giving you that draft by this date. Because I knew I could just sit there and sort of rework it and rewrite and expand it and everything. And you know, is it perfect? Absolutely not. But I needed a deadline. I needed the opportunity to ship that book, to get it off my my desk so that I could continue to focus and learn and grow and keep moving. So depending on the goal that you have, if it's something that's maybe a little bit more ambiguous, like writing a book can be a very ambiguous goal, right? There's nobody standing over your shoulder saying, hey, when are you going to have that done? You've got to find ways to give yourself a deadline in some of these areas of life. Now I share all this with you because I want you to win. I know that God wants to do something in and through your life and I so desperately want you to win. So I want to leave you with this. Recognize that Parkinson's law does not only apply to your time. It applies to so many different areas of your life. It applies to the material things that we accumulate. Like the things that I purchase and accumulate will expand to fit the home that I live in and probably maybe just a little bit more, right? Like fill up the garage. If you think about your finances, the amount of expenses that you have has a tendency to expand to your income level and maybe just a little bit more, right? Like you're spending just a little bit more than you've got coming in every single month. That's Parkinson's law in action. It's expanding to fill what's available. And I believe that the biggest danger of Parkinson's law is that it robs you of capacity. Capacity that you need to have to be able to pivot into what God wants you to be able to pivot into. To be ready for the ups and downs of life that happen to every single one of us. To be able to be there as a father, as a husband, as a spouse. To be able to be there requires you to have capacity, but if you're always pushing the limits of your time, if you're always pushing the limits of your finances, always pushing the limits of your space, then you're robbing yourself of the capacity to go and do great things.